Let's go ahead and take a look at number eight, variables. Double click that, it's going to open Xcode. All right, we're back to naming things. So you remember that we've talked about declaring something, we give it a name and a value by declaring a constant. And then we talked about how to associate it with the list of other statements by creating a function. So now this is how programming works. You identify things, you give them names, and then you associate them and call the names based on whether it's a function or a constant. But notice that uh, constant really it means constant that it doesn't change. So you use constants when you want to do something that never changes. But there's another way that you can deal with uh, creating a value and a name and it's called a variable. So a variable is something that can change over time. So let's take a look and compare constant and variables. So we've talked about this a little bit already, but a constant is something that never changes. So for example, your birthday, it never changes. No matter how old you get, the date is always the same. Now, a variable is something that uh, can change over time. So, for example, they're saying your favorite shirt or other article of clothing. Uh, when you were a little kid, you had a favorite shirt, but then, you know, you grew out of your Batman t-shirt and next thing you know, it doesn't fit anymore and people laugh at you when you wear it at work. So you have a different favorite shirt. So that's be, be something we call a variable, something that changes. Now it says, uh, you can see that there's, we kind of use a little bit of both of variables and constants. So for example, like at school with sports, you've got a home team and a visitor. The home team is always constant, but then the visitors is different because they change all the time. So that would be a variable. You can read through these, but it just, you think about how you would list them as a variable or a constant. So like where you were born or where you live now, like where you were born will always be the same. Where you live may change. Um, how old you are may change, of course, every year. Your favorite movie might change, so that would be a variable. Uh, something like how many inches are in a foot, that is a constant. It's not going to change. Who was the first president of the United States? That's a constant. Won't change. All right. So here, when we declare a constant, we use this let keyword. But when we declare a variable, we use this var keyword. See the difference? Now, once you have a variable, you can change the value. See? Now, let's add a new line of code that assigns a new value to current location. So I'm going to say current location equals uh, the basement. That's my current location. And let's take a look. I had the sidebar results sidebar closed. So here we go. Check that out. See how that resolves? Sweet. So here's some other things to remember. We, we have the same rules for a name. Uh, the way that we create it, where we do the lowercase and camel case. Um, we still do the equals to assign a value. And the difference is the constant cannot be changed after you have assigned it. But a variable can change. So let's see how we would work with that. So the question is, when do you use them? So you use variables in places where a value in your program needs to change over time. So for example, if you have a game, the score is going to change over time. So as you earn points or lose points, the score will change. So we declare a variable by saying var score equals. Then if the, score, the player scores 10 points, you'd update it. And then another 5 points, you'd update it. Um, you can actually use the value of the existing score value and add points to it like this. So notice how you call score equals score plus five. But what you're doing is you're updating the value after you're referencing it. So if score was 15 right here 
and and uh, sorry, let me show you the sidebar here. If score is 15 and plus 5, then the score changes after that. It might be a little confusing, but what this does is it it allows you to do multiple things in one step. So notice it says the right hand side is calculated first, and then it does that. Now, notice here when here we're just writing if we just write score plus five it, it, it evaluates the 20 25 but the score the value hasn't changed it actually it only changes when we use the equal sign which is a, what we call the assignment we're assigning the value so now notice here it changes 25 28 So what do you think the value of score would be after these lines? Try and find out. Score equals 5. Score equals score plus score. Well, I think it's going to equal 10. What do you think? So score equals 5. Score equals score plus score. Survey says 10. Awesome. All right, now let's go to the next one. Now there is a shortcut, and let's talk about that. Here, you've started, you declare your variable, so score equals zero. Then we take the current value of score and add two, assign the value to the result of score. That's the new value, so we've done that already. Makes sense. Let me open the sidebar. Now, we do this a lot, that we actually have a special operator, plus equals, which is a shorthand that combines addition and assignment. So notice this here, from score equals score plus two, we all we have to do is say score plus equals two. So I can come up here and I can change this. Notice the experiment, replace the line code using the plus equals. So now I say plus equals two. So this is saying, take the score and add two and then assign that to the new value. Now, this is called a compound assignment, the plus equals. You can do it not only for numbers, but anywhere you can use the plus. For example, you need to do it with strings. Check that out. So here we say greeting, var greeting equals, and then it's empty. Now we're saying take the greeting and add hello to it. Now we're saying add a space to the hello, and finally add world to the hello in the space. See how that works? Awesome. So the compound assignment, that's really cool. So now this statement, notice how we have statement plus equals word one. And we're going to say statement plus equals uh, space. I like that. And then statement plus equals word two state whoops statement sorry I, I pressed tab I that's not what I wanted statement plus equals space statement plus equals word three and finally statement plus equals space statement plus equals word four. Okay, let's check that out. Let's go over here and notice here. Let's click on the quick look. <laughs> it's still too long for us to read, but I can open this up. There it is. Compound assignment is useful. All right. Next screen. So let's talk about confusing changes. So imagine you're meeting a group of friends at the movies at eight. You receive a message, the plan has changed. You're now seeing a different movie at a different theater and it'll be meeting at nine. A little later, another message says, hey, we're gonna change it again. Now you're just gonna hang out at your friend's house and watch a movie there. The time has changed to six and you'll order pizza. Then you receive another message, you're going to be at your other friend's house, but at 
So with all the changes, how likely is it someone's going to forget and end up in the right, wrong place? So anytime you make a change, there's a chance someone who relies on the information ends up using the old information and making a mistake. The same thing happens with programming. So you make something constant, you guarantee the value will never change. There's no other place than the part in the program that it'll change. But when you need to use variables, things do change as the program runs. So this is a key word here. Something that is changeable is called mutable, to mutate or to change. And something that is unable to change is called immutable. So it's something that doesn't change. So remember, you want to use a constant if something doesn't ever need to change. So let's check out what happens when we try to change a constant. Show the sidebar. Uh, notice what's happening here. We have an error. If I click that error, it says cannot assign to value. Name is a let constant. Now you can uh, fix it. It says, I want to click away here. Notice Error, some errors Xcode will suggest a change and to fix the error for you. So there, we can just click on here and then click to change it, double click to change it. And now it selected it and fixed it. That's nice. Now, let's see if we should always accept to fix it. Let's look at the next line. So, spell checker, the sentence, my dear Uncle Joe came to visit, is a perfectly good sentence. Nothing's misspelled. But, uh, dear is the wrong word. It means it's not a four-legged animal. So you meant dear as in a relative, a friend. So, it can give you the right sentence, but doesn't always know what you mean. Same thing happens with fix it. So, it says, in the example on the last page, did the value of name really need to change? A better solution might have been to set the value of the constant to John in the first place. Say, let name equals John. So, even though we had changed it to a variable, we maybe we didn't need to use a variable because the name won't ever change. All right, let's take a look at safer code. So the question is, why bother with constants? You can just use variables. Aren't they better? No, they are not. Let's talk about why. So sometimes you write code expecting that everything will be the same. But imagine you ask your friend, hey, what do you want to drink? And then um, you're working hard to, to figure it out. So someone says, hey, my favorite beverage is uh, coffee. So you drive across town, you buy a coffee maker. It says, depending on how long you're gone, you have no way of knowing whether your friend will change their mind. Well, friend beverage, all of a sudden they want tea. Well, you just found a coffee grinder. Uh, they want water. Now they want sparkling water. No, they want plain water. Wait a minute. You've set up, you're going along, and then they said nothing. So here it is, all these steps, all these functions, and the next thing you know, you're knocking on their door at 3 o'clock, 3 a.m., uh, and they don't want to wake up, and they're mad, and they're like, what's your deal? It says your friend's desire for coffee is variable, so you can't behave in a way that expects it to be constant. Well, same thing happens in code. When you set a variable, and then that variable gets used and changes, you may do a lot of things uh, expecting it to stay the same, but then it ends up, uh, it might be wrong. So, for example, if you change the friend beverage choice from var to let, notice the errors. So, let's check out the errors. Let's set this to a constant by saying let. The next thing you know, we got all these errors. Now, we can correct in one of two ways. You could keep the beverage as a constant, delete all the lines that change it, or you could change it to a variable, delete all the lines 
you are can't be absolutely sure you still need, like set up coffee grinder. So the trouble is, how do we how do we mix these two? This doesn't quite solve the problem, does it? Let's figure that out. So the changing of value should only be done deliberately. So when you write your app, you want to make sure you're clear with each piece of code. You want to make sure if it's a variable, you or someone else might change the variable. You want to make sure you're not changing it accidentally. So consider this program for recording and calculating scores. So we have these variables, score for green, score for red, score for gold. Then the player score, score for Gary, score for Rob. Let's take a look at the sidebar to see what these look like. So here's the game events. We got this, we got score for red and green and gold and so forth and so on. So the program has a problem. Each player hit the same targets, but at the end of the game, Rob has fewer points than Gary. Can you find the problem? Try to find the target scores at the start of the program with let instead of var. Score for Rob, score for Gary. So they each had the same number of scores, but what happened? Why are the scores wrong? So can you see the problem? Notice up here, score for red accidentally was used instead of score for Rob. Because score for red is a variable, it got changed. See this here? All of a sudden, score for red changed to 15, where it started out as 10. Well, the next time then it gets used, because it was 10 over here and, and then 15 over here, Gary got more points. Cheating old Gary. Can't believe it. No, it's not his fault. So if we change these, so notice this hint, try defining the target scores at the start of the program with let instead of var. So let's change these to constants so they won't change. And when you change them to constants, if you accidentally try to use them, guess what happens? you get an error because we don't want. Now notice here the fix it says, hey, change that to a variable. Nope, we don't want that. That was a mistake. That was a misspelling. So I'm going to change this to Rob. And guess what? Prob the errors go away and the scores are the same. So notice how it was just a simple spelling error that caused a big headache and poor Rob thought he lost. But he didn't. Okay. So we talked about constants, things that don't change. And that's, we call it immutable. When, a, when something, a value is unchangeable, it's called immutable. A var for variables, and that means it's changed over time. These are called mutable. Then we can use the uh, value, it can be part of the assignment. So we can say score equals score plus 10. Then we have the compound assignment, and we want to make sure we use them properly. Awesome.